Hey, what's up? As far as Thai noodle dishes go, Pad Thai gets all of the love and attention. In my house though, Pad Woon Sen or Thai stir fried vermicelli noodles gets made way more often. Why? It's less sugary sweet than Pad Thai, which I really like. And in my opinion, it's way easier to make a good version at home. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make it. For Pad Woon Sen, you'll need 200 grams or about seven to eight ounces of mung bean noodles. Compared to rice noodles, which are the backbone of Pad Thai, mung bean noodles, in my experience, are a lot less likely to get gummy and break apart when stir fried, and you don't really need to cook them. Instead, I'll just soak them in warm water. To do that, I'll scoop both 100 gram packages into a medium bowl and then add just enough warm water to cover. Then I'll jump in and press these noodles down to make sure that they're fully submerged. The package says soak for five minutes, but I prefer to let them go for 15 to 20. So I'll move these off to the side to fully hydrate and then I'll grab all of the other stuff I need for this wound scent. At home, stir fry success is enabled by preparation and so I always have 100% of my prep done before I start cooking. I usually start with the chicken. For this dish, I have one pound or a rough half kilo of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. They taste very good, they're easy to cook, and at any given time, there is a very high percentage chance that I have a package of these in my fridge or freezer. To prep them for the pan, I usually remove any excess yellow fat. That stuff tends to make the dish greasier than it needs to be, and it's kind of flabby. Overall, not delicious, so I get rid of it. Once it's off, I'll cut the chicken into thin strips like this. For noodle dishes, I tend to cut my meat and vegetables into longer thinner pieces so that they integrate with the thin long noodles a little easier than say wide flat chunks. Behind the chicken I'll cut 200 grams of cabbage. That's just about a quarter of a medium sized to small head. I'll cut out the core like this then I'll cut the quarter into eighths then I'll turn it 90 degrees and cut it into thin strips not unlike the chicken thighs that I just did a second ago. Behind the cabbage I'm going to cut some snow peas. These ones had some strings that were a little bit more fibrous than I'm used to so I made the effort to pull those out and for the same reason as before I'm going to cut these peas into longer strips as opposed to leaving them whole because I think they mix better into the noodles. In total, I'll need roughly 100 grams of fresh snow peas, but if you can't get them, frozen would work instead. Next, I've got 100 grams of thinly sliced red bell pepper. I've subbed these in for the more traditional fresh tomato because I've never had a partially cooked tomato in a Thai noodle dish that I thought was worth eating. They're usually hot, soft, mealy, and the skin is tough. There's nothing to like about that. Instead, this bell pepper is gonna bring the same sweetness but have way better texture, in my opinion. Behind the red bell pepper, I've got 100 grams of shredded carrot ready to go as well. The shredding was done with my julienne peeler, and if you don't have a julienne peeler, seriously, buy one. Don't make me beg. Then rounding out my prep here, I've got 15 grams of minced garlic, 100 grams or half of a white onion that I've cut longitudinally or parallel to the top and bottom. Since these aren't gonna be cooked until fully softened in the stir fry, the direction actually does matter. Cross cut or latitudinal onions can get slimy when you cook them this way. The last little bit of prep on this tray is to just have two eggs that you've lightly beaten and some stir fry sauce, but I'll get into how this sauce is made in just a second. I also wanna mention that this looks like a lot of prep, but even somebody who takes their time could probably get through all these veggies in about 20 minutes or the same amount of time it takes to soak those noodles. Now, let's cook this thing. To do that, I'll grab my 14 inch nonstick pan and drop it on the stove over medium high heat or let's call it like a 7.9 out of 10 hot. From there, I'll set my stir fry stuff off to the side and then check back on my mung bean vermicelli. As you can see, these have swollen a little bit and now they're all softened up and a lot more malleable. Notice that I'm taking care not to mess up the direction of these noodles. That's because I'm gonna cut them with scissors. Keeping them lined up allows me to make sure that I'm cutting all of the noodles to a relatively even length. The first few times I did this, I had the noodles all mixed up into a nest, and when I cut them, I had super long noodles that were hard to mix together, and super short ones that were a lot less fun to eat. Once I got my noodles cut into six to nine inch lengths like this, I'm gonna bring them over to the sink, drain off their liquid, and now they're ready for the pan. I'll get back to these in just a second. Next, I'm gonna check the temperature of my frying pan real quick. For nonstick, I try not to go over 425 to 450F. Any hotter and the coating breaks down. Now, the first step towards Woon Sen is a long squeezer of high smoke point neutral oil. Then in goes all of my sliced up chicken thighs. From there, I'll jump in with some tongs and spread that out. I'll hit this with a little bit of salt, but nothing too crazy because there's a bunch of salt coming down the line. Now, I'll jump back into the pan and give everything a stir and toss to combine and get some new meat touching this hot pan. By the way, silicone tip tongs are totally sick for stir frying. I didn't know that until like three weeks ago. 
Two to three minutes later, my chicken is nicely seared and browned up and it's just about cooked through. So I'm gonna take my pan off the heat and throw this chicken into an empty medium bowl. Now the pan's back on the stove over medium high heat and from there I'll add in two large eggs and give them a little scramble. These eggs are gonna take about 20 to 30 seconds to get cooked, so stay frosty and keep them moving. Once they're about 90% cooked, I'm gonna take them off the heat and throw them in with my cooked chicken. The pan goes back on the stove, then in goes a long squeezer or about one tablespoon's worth of oil. Then in goes my bell pepper, my snow peas, and then my cabbage. Next, I'll grab my tongs and stir and toss these veggies to get them coated with oil and to get them all properly mixed up. A small pinch of salt to help draw out some moisture. That's gonna help these veggies take on some color faster and keep them from steaming into sogginess. Another few tosses to get all that mixed up. You know, classic stir frying moves. You guys get it. And once all three of these veggies are just starting to soften up or after about two minutes, I'll add in my carrots and stir those in to get them cooking. I add the carrots last because I want them to be a touch on the al dente side so that the final dish can have a little bit more textural vibrancy. Now I'm gonna give these veggies a few more tosses in about one more minute to get tender so that I can thank Vessi for sponsoring this video. Vessi is a sneaker company that makes comfortable 100% waterproof shoes disguised as sneakers. I've been using this pair of Vessi weekend sneakers as my everyday kitchen and run around town shoe for almost a year now. I've kept them around because they're comfortable, lightweight, and despite being covered in food multiple times and then washed in the washing machine, they still somehow look good as new and are still waterproof. Today, I'm wearing them out on the town to get groceries and look, a puddle, another puddle. Here's me standing in standing water. Check the sock, you guys. Dry as a frickin' bone. That's thanks to a material called Dymatex that Vessi integrates right into the knit in the sneaker and it wicks away moisture, keeping your feet dry all day long. So to get yourself a pair, click the link in my description and use code Brian at checkout and you'll get 25 bucks off of each pair of adult Vessi shoes you order. And oh yeah, free shipping as well. Again, that's code Brian for $25 off plus free shipping. The link is in my description. Thank you, Vessi. After four minutes of cook time in total, my veggies are nicely softened up and taken on a touch of caramelization. So I'm going to call them done. I'll move them over to the bowl to hang out with the eggs and chicken while I finish the noodle part of this wound scent. Pan back down down over medium high heat one more time, then another tablespoon of oil. That's about three in total for you guys keeping track of your kales. Then in goes my sliced onion. Quick stir and toss to get that frying up. I'll cook that for about 60 seconds or so alone, and once they've taken on some nice golden brown color on the edges like this, I'll add in my minced garlic. This pan is pretty hot right now, so keep an eye on the garlic. I'd go maybe 20 to 25 seconds max here. Basically just enough time to bloom it out and lose that raw edge. The pan's looking a little bit dry, so game time decision here to add in a touch more oil for what's coming next. That's all of my soaked and cut mung bean vermicelli. I'll stir that up to get the onions and garlics mixed in, and I really don't want the garlic sitting under these noodles for too long in the hot pan because it will definitely burn and then take over the whole dish with its stupid acrid flavor. Once the noodles are frying up and everything's combined, I'm gonna add in all of my stir fry sauce. To make that, I combined 50 grams of soy sauce, 20 grams of fish sauce, 25 grams of brown sugar, 100 grams of oyster sauce. Yes, there's oysters in there. Then 150 grams of water and I stirred it to combine. Once this stir fry sauce has been stirred in and brought to a simmer, you can see the noodles have softened even more and look kind of glassy. Soaking alone doesn't make these noodles soft enough to eat, so this stir fry sauce is actually going to do that last 25% of the work to make them nice and tender. I'll give this at least two more minutes to simmer and soften up and then I'll add in half of my veg, egg, and chicken. I'll stir to get that combined with the noodles, then goes in the other half and I'll toss to get that combined. I'll mention that the noodles thirstiness will be widely variable, so if things are looking a little bit dry, I'd be ready to add a little bit more water and or oyster sauce. Be careful with adding too much more soy or fish sauces because this dish can get salty really quick. I personally don't want my wound sen overly saucy, so texturally this is looking ideal to me. To finish, I'll plate this up in a bowl because a plate for stir fry noodles would be totally outrageous. And oh yeah, I should mention that there's about four adult sized portions in this pan. If you only have a 10 inch nonstick pan at your disposal, that means that you could feed two people with a half batch free and clear. 
Lastly, I'll top these noodles with a pinch of fresh cilantro, some thinly sliced scallions, a little squeezer of sriracha to bring a little vibrant heat, and then some sesame seeds to make it look pretty. Stir fried noodles are definitely one of the world's most comforting foods, and Pad Woon Sen is one of the world's best versions. The noodles are chewy but tender, the vegetables are softened but have a touch of snap, and overall that heavy oyster sauce vibe brings a round savory quality that when paired with salty fish sauce and a little bit of brown sugar mm. is textbook Woon Sen. Honestly, I think this one deserves a prime spot in the weeknight rotation because it only takes about 30 to 35 minutes to make start to finish, and other than the mung bean noodles, you probably have most of what you need to make this on hand right now. Just sub in whatever vegetables you have in the pantry and whatever protein you've got and you're good to go. I hope you try it soon. Let's eat this thing.